And this is the breakfast and plus TV Africa time for the second conversation. Today's World Tuberculosis Day and tuberculosis remains one of the world's deadliest infections killer. Now each day over 4,100 people lose their lives to TB and close to 28,000 people fall ill with their preventable and curable disease called tuberculosis. Global efforts to combat TB have saved an estimated 66 million lives since uh, 2000. However, COVID-19 pandemic has reversed the years of progress made in the fight to end TB. For the first time over a decade, TB deaths increased in 2000, uh, that's in 2020. The theme for World Tuberculosis Day uh, 2022, Invest to End TB, Save Lives. We're now being joined by Dr. Ibrahim Omar Gano with the Kanu State Ministry of Health. Dr. Ibrahim Gano, it's good to have you join us. Good morning and thank you for having me. All right. Uh, let's let's talk about today uh, what's the significance of having this conversation and what's the significance of today today is a day that uh, the entire world uh, comes together and uh, always uh, when we have this day on the 24th march each year it's a day to actually talk about tb or tuberculosis and uh, to commemorate the over 140 years or so of a lifetime of achievement in the discovery of the quality agent of TB for, uh, for TB or tuberculosis disease, that is mycobacterium tuberculosis, but to also look at the challenges faced by the world in terms of controlling and then ending the tuberculosis or TB disease. And uh, it's a day that we always remember the number of the human lives that have been affected or infected by the deadly disease, which happens to be the second most infectious disease worldwide. All right, Dr. Omar Gano, uh the world or Nigeria seem to be doing so well uh, in the fight against um, tuberculosis uh, until 2020 with the COVID-19. You know, it does do almost all efforts. You know, were just drifted towards uh, you know ending um, the pandemic. Now, what do we really have right now? What are the incident rates like now, specifically in Nigeria? Can you give us some figures to work with? Yes, uh, worldwide. From the year 2000 to date, uh, a little over 60 million lives have been saved worldwide. However, with the coming of the pandemic of COVID-19, reverse has been made of over 10 years achievement in the control of TB. And that has really hampered the efforts being put together by all stakeholders, as well as uh, institutions, government and partners to curb the disease. This year alone, we are having a situation whereby a number of individuals have been affected or infected with TB, but because of the pandemic, they have no ease of access to commencement of treatment. And that has really affected a lot in terms of care and uh, uh, support for TB. In terms of burden, we are taking off Nigeria as the first country in Africa with the highest TB burden, as well as number six in the world. And uh, being also hit by COVID-19, a lot has to be made in terms of making efforts to actually uh, bring the information to the people and make sure people who have TB or have symptoms of TB come to uh, to the aid of the system in terms of getting diagnosed and treated for TB. More so, symptom, symptoms-wise, it happens that some of the features or symptoms of TB also happens to be similar to COVID-19. And that has to do with the risk perception and the communication in terms of people understanding that this symptom that you have, it could also be TB or it may not be TB. So in essence, Symptoms of TB also have similarities with COVID. And then in terms of investment, we're looking at a lot of attention being pushed towards COVID-19 as a global pandemic. But we have to also remember that TB as an epidemic is also there with us. And a little over 4,800 people are affected or infected by TB every day in the world. Mm. Very scary statistics that you have mentioned. But let's come back to, um, you know, the fundamentals and look at you know, with Lassa fever, you would definitely say keep your environment clean, avoid the rats and what have you. And so with the malaria, you talk about mosquitoes. Uh, what should we know about tuberculosis? What you should know about tuberculosis is that it's an airborne disease. It's a disease that is transmitted from one person to another. And it's a disease that is transmitted through coughing, sneezing, laughter, or even talking. And it's a disease that is affected by or that is influenced by in the nature of where people live, in terms of crowdness, in terms of 
personal and environmental hygiene in terms of good air quality, in terms of better ventilation and airflow. And it exists that if not diagnosed and treated on time, an infected person or an infectious person can transmit it to at least 10 to 15 people every year. And if you look at the numbers, if you have 10 people infected by TB, they are not diagnosed and put on treatment, chances are they have the risk of infecting 10 to 15 individuals in 12 months. And look at the statistics. We are taking of a country that is the most populous uh, in, the, in the African continent. We are taking of the most populous black nation in the world. And we are taking of one of the few countries in the world that has large population and then expanding population. So what we are saying is the rate of infection can be enhanced by the way we live and by the way people understand. So it's important that anybody who is coughing for at least two weeks or more should go to the nearest facility and get tested for for, 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 for TB, for example. And if you have to be positive for TB, you place that person on treatment because that is the only way you can break the chain of transmission and then stop the spread of the disease. Because an infectious person who is not treated or treatment, who has not been commenced on treatment, who is in interaction with other individuals, has the risk of infecting 10 to 50 people. And we're talking of people attending events, attending to activities in the world, I mean, in, the, in their daily activities, going to the markets, going to marketplaces, going to weddings, funerals, gatherings, in churches, in mosques, in other in, in, uh, places, even in their workplace. These individuals who happens to interact with others and are infectious or symptomatic, and they happen to have TB, for example, they have the risk of trans transmitting that disease. Dr. Ibrahim Umar Gano, um, can you quickly tell us what exactly is responsible for TB? I mean, just like we have mentioned, it's a good thing to know that it's uh, a disease that is communicable. I mean, it can be transmitted uh, from one person to the other. But what, what is really responsible for this? Uh, tuberculosis or TB, in short, is caused by a bacteria. It's a bus light. It cannot be seen with an it's the naked eye. And it's called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is the causative agent for TB. So it has nothing to do with lifestyle, behavior? So Lifestyle and behavior, they give room for ease of spread of disease. Because just like I said, the way people live, the way people interact, the way people behave, for example, so people who have the attitude of, for example, exposing themselves to places where you have risk for, for example, uh, uh, putting your lab at risk or maybe putting things at risk that has to do with your system, your protecting mechanisms, your lungs, because it's an airborne disease, so it easily gets spread through the lungs. So when you have something that harasses or affects negatively your system, your air, airways, it can put somebody at risk. There are other medical conditions, for example, uh, that can also influence. For example, the attitude of people, their way of life, their, for example, if you take uh, alcoholism, for example, take cigarette smoking, take other medical conditions like diabetes, like for example, heart disease, you know, all these, uh, these conditions and attitudes or behaviors, they can also influence and make ways or make it easier for the spread of, uh, of TB among individuals because it's talking about the rate of protection or the, the level of protection of somebody's airway to actually resist and actually contain in the event that somebody inhales the bus light because it's not um, it's not an instant it's not it's an instant that somebody inhales the bus light the bus light will now have to undergo various changes transformations for example uh, uh, growth and uh, mutation I mean uh, divisions and then the bus light will have to divide from one to two, three to four, from forty-eight, like that, like that. So those multiplications and uh, actually growth of the bus light is influenced by many factors. All right, Doctor um, Omar Ganor, uh, can you actually be infected uh, with um, tuberculosis and um, not really have active TB? It's very possible. It's very possible. A lot of people have the bus light, but they don't have the disease. That is what we call tuberculosis infection or TB infection. Those individuals have the bus light and they keep having the bus light in their system. Uh, somebody with intact immunity, with no immunocompromised uh, status or nature, can have the bus light for as many years as possible. And somebody who has been vaccinated with uh, BCG, for example, can also have that protection. But it's important to remember there is there are two ways that which somebody can become can have active TB. One is infection from another person immediately, for example. The other one is by reactivation of the latent or dormant TB uh, infection. And that infection uh, that has 
uh, that has stayed for in somebody's system for quite some time with depressed immunity, with so many changes either in body system or, 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 or the status of somebody's uh, uh, immunity or protection can also give room for reactivation of the dormant TB uh, infection. And that is one of the reasons why it's important to always test and to always uh, watch for symptoms uh, in, 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 in somebody. But somebody can have it and somebody can, can, can have the, uh, the, the infection without the disease. All right, but then again, uh, since uh, you can be infected, I know it can um, properly be managed, you know, but whatever happened uh, or happens to an infected um, lung um, that has been affected with tuberculosis, uh, over time, even if the person has been um, not maybe uh, um, screened to be free from that particular disease, would you st still be able to use that particular lung after you've been cured? Of course. Uh, that is the reason why it's always good to diagnose on time and put people on treatment on time because the longer the infection, the higher the infective dose of the bus light, the the, the, light, the, 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 more, the the higher when somebody has depressed immunity, the more likely it has the possibility of destructive uh, effects on somebody's lungs. For example, somebody who has had, who is already malnourished, for example, or has immunocompromised immunity, or is already aged, or has some other infections, or maybe disease conditions, or other medical conditions, and then has not been diagnosed on time and placed on treatment on time, they have chances of having more effects to their lungs, which can lead to, for example, other complications, which can be uh, semi-permanent or permanent, for example, like fibrosis, or maybe disrupted lung disease, or other complications that may happen to their lungs. So they have also risks of having some uh, maybe opacities happening in their in their lungs, or maybe having some consolidations, and those things can be able can be destructive to their lungs in the long in the long run, or even for maybe for many many years in their lifetime, or even for the rest of their time. That's the reason why when somebody is symptomatic, it's always good to diagnose on time and place somebody on treatment on time because one, you are breaking the transmission; two, you are preventing the possible long-term effects of the infection in somebody and then you are also having to mitigate or minimize any possible side effects or drug drug interaction that somebody may have because that person who may be having symptom of TB, if in the event that that person has TB and is been diagnosed at time, will now prevent the other, uh, probably other medical condition that somebody is on or maybe some other medication that somebody may, may be on because it's good to remember somebody can also have TB infection while on other treatments That's or Abraham. other diseases. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, as we begin to course this conversation down, I, I know that you have mentioned persistent cough or coughing as one of the symptoms, but which might not necessarily be until um, the individual gets tested. So um, you have mentioned symptoms. What are the symptoms, I mean, likely possible symptoms that one could uh, look out for, for the case of TB? Yes. So, yeah. So it's important because cough is a common symptom, but there are individuals who may not have cough for that time we said. So it's important to remember cough is one of the symptoms. Other symptoms for TB are fever, weight loss, or night sweat. You will call it drenching night sweat because it's usually at night, though some may even have sweat during the daytime. But you know with weather conditions and things like that, you find out that there are some level of sweating that somebody experiences that are within the normality. But cough, fever, weight loss, night sweat, these are the cardinal symptoms of TB. And anybody with these symptoms should go to the nearest hospital for testing. And it's also good to remember that somebody may have extra pulmonary TB because there are there are there is a TB infection that affects only lungs, you know, as a primary source of infection. But there is, there is a, a kind of infection that is affect that affects other systems in the body. For example, uh, kidney, liver, abdomen, intestine. You know, all those even brain, joints, bones and even a uh, spinal cord or even the spine. So these are other body parts that can be that can be affected by or infected, I mean, that can be, uh, you know, uh, affected by TB infection. And when somebody has other systems affected by the TB uh, uh, bus line, symptoms related to those areas would also be manifest in addition to cough. So that's why other constitutional symptoms for TB, weight loss, fever, and night sweat should also be considered when somebody comes and presents to the facility with this uh, 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 history of cough and then with other symptoms in the body. Some may even cough blood and then the, 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 the other, some may even have weight loss or maybe uh, chest pain or maybe back pain, when, especially when they cough. So all these symptoms happen and then when they happen, we should always think of TB and we all should right. always go to the nearest hospital for testing. All right, Dr. Omar, just before we go, uh, the team for this year is... Uh, 
invest um, to NTB saves lives. So it brings me to the question of um, management and um, you know treatment for TB. So far, how accessible uh, is it for Nigerians? Uh, is the treatment uh, affordable? Uh, do Nigerians have access um, to this quality treatment for tuberculosis? All right, so it's good to remember that there are two phases to this very important point. One, uh, TB is an infectious disease that can spread from one person to another, and there is a global, uh, there's a global effort to contain the epidemic, and Nigeria has been part to that, uh, and then as part of the United Nations High Level Mission, as well as commitment of the entire countries in the world to end in TB by 2030, and then in line with the Sustainable Development Goal of 2035. The universal uh, push to ensure every person in the world has uninterrupted access to high quality anti TB drugs is being uh, implemented in Nigeria. What am I saying? Every person infected with TB has to be placed on the standard WHO recommended treatment for TB, which is provided at no cost to the patient. But it's not at no, it's not at no cost to the patient because governments and partners globally and in this country have put hands together, put it's resources nice. together from diagnosis to treatment. Secondly, with the, with the pandemic of COVID-19 now, we know the investment for TB is still inadequate. And then with this pandemic and the reversal of 10-year gains of TB control efforts in the world, it calls for more investment, more resources, more money in terms of awareness creation, in terms of sensitization, in terms of programs like this that will make individuals to be aware of TB and the ones that have symptoms to come for treatment, in terms of more investment for diagnosis, because we know our equipment for TB diagnosis are not covering the entire places in the, in the, in the world, right, in doctor. the country. We can do more for that. All right, thank you so much. I'm Dr. Ibrahim Omar Gano. Uh, thanks for your thought and thanks for all that you have shared concerning uh, tuberculosis as we celebrate uh, the day today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, Dr. Ibrahim Omar Gano is with the Kano State Ministry of Health. And that's the size of the show for today. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching. I am Messi Popo. See you tomorrow. And I'm Justin Kadunye. Uh, stand by for the news, top of the app.